Hey everybody, Edo here, and I am excited today because I have Chad and Marlena Ingham on the line. Say hello. Hello, Edo. Hello. Glad to be and, here. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. And if you're not, if you don't know these two, um, they run Top Shelf Gamer, which is this super cool website where you can buy custom or uh, specialized components for all of your board games or many of your board games, um, and it also lists like games that you can use them with. So there's a bunch of components and how to use it. And I was actually, uh, we'll talk about this, but I, I went to it, I had seen your products, but it was the first time I was going to your website. Um, and I was actually impressed with your layout there um, and how you put it together and how you make it easy to figure out what you should get for what game, um, which we'll talk about. But um, to kick things off, right, not, there aren't that many people who are running uh, a website selling a, you know, really fancy board game components or top shelf board game components. Um, like, how, can you take us through your journey a little bit? Like, how did you get to selling this stuff uh, uh, on your end? Like, what's your, how did you get into gaming and get into this, this business? Well, actually, he was the gamer first. He, he slowly and surely brought me into it. <laughs> yeah. Turned um, her to the geek side. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, he started out with like small things like Ticket to Ride, and I always like Catan. But um, yeah, I actually it was interesting. We 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 started it. We started the conversation on a walk, right? Yeah. Um, we were walking, and he always has these business ideas. He always wants to do things, and there's one business idea that took off, and he's like, "Dang, I missed my boat." So I'm like, "All right." Uh, <laughs> I had just had two ch my second child, and. I'm like, I'm going to be home for a while, so why don't I help you run one of your businesses? <laughs> we'll do it at night. It'll be easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, it was not. <laughs> no. But, um, yeah, he, he, told, he ran some uh, things off. I said, what about that um, game, board game thing you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And. Yeah, we just started talking about it. I said, okay, well, this is what we need to do to, to start it. We have to, you know, go, um, file a few papers. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, well, so and, and what, but what was the, so that, that was that, the, the fateful walk, that was the moment where you were like, let's do it. In terms of the inspiration for the actual business, mm -hmm. what, what, you know, Chad on your end, what, you know, it sounds like you might have had, four or five business ideas but like in terms of this specific one what, what were you playing a game did you did you see a component like how did you sort yeah. of say this is something we need to do yeah um so i had a we, we had a game group and uh lords of Waterdeep was hitting the table a lot and i was you know on the internet and i came across these D and D bulls little wooden pieces to replace the cubes that come with the game and, um, you know, I wanted to, you know, bring those to my, my game group and, you know, just my first bling, if you will. And, um, so went on board game geek connected with the person messaged them a little back and forth. How do I pay? How do I ship? And, you know, I finally got them. I loved them and it, <clears throat> it was the, um, first of many, but I remember thinking this has got to be, there's got to be. An easier way to do this. This was really complicated, right? Um, and then also at that same time, there's a lot of companies doing Kickstarters for these neat upgrades, like metal coins over here and inserts over here and, you know, this over there. And I just really, you know, as a gamer, I wanted a place where I could go to get all this together. I could see, hey, I love Lord's Waterdeep. Uh I see that there's D and D pulls for it. There's coins. There's some card sleeves and an insert, all for my favorite games, right? All in one place. So and that's really the idea came from. Like my love as my love of games is being a gamer. Yeah. Right. Well, I, hey, I think that that works for me. And actually, that was one of the things I was alluding to earlier in the call on on the site where. Um, it was super neat for me. So I, I was on the site and, you know, again, you're like, hey, I like this game. And it'll say, okay, that here's the card sleeves that work with it. Here are the meeples and here are your options. Do you want these things? And then you do the check. And then it's like a standard checkout. But just that it, it answers the what should I get for this game question really cleanly. I, it was – I went to the about page and like read 
the 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 it was it wasn't like the mission statement, but it was the about. But the about's like we want to present the information of what to buy really cleanly. And I was like, hey, look at that! You guys did exactly what you were saying you're going to do. Um, Thank you. Glad so, but when you were starting, I pr- presumably you weren't. And, and we're going to talk about this. You have a Kickstarter coming up, but uh, presumably when you started, you weren't like we're going to like manufacture these things. Uh, mm-hmm. I assume it was maybe a consolidation. So, how did you? How did you? When, once you're like, okay, well, we're going to make this site. The er, the first set of products that were available, did how did you get them? Did you acquire them? Did you just link to other sites? What was the what was the early site experience? Yeah, well, the big thing was connecting with the warehouse or the distribu- distributors. Uh, we we connected with as many distributors as we could and vendors and vendors Mm -hmm. because a lot of them were one-offs for instance insert here was one of our first ones and Mm -hmm. uh like we would go go to one-offs that that hey why don't why don't you sell it to us so we can sell it in more of a broader broader um fashion or an easier fashion Yeah, yeah just another outlet but yeah um we we basically just connected with as many vendors as we could. We had a little vendor spreadsheet, and we would uh, find out what we could get from everywhere. Lots and of we, phone calls. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> lots of, uh, you know, would you like to be part of this? And, and, you know, to our happiness, you know, a lot of people said, yeah, that sounds great. Let's yeah. do it. And so, so it sounds like from the beginning – you you were actually housing this stuff, right? It wasn't simply I'm going to get an order and then I'm going to get I'm going to take it. The site is going to then contact these seven vendors and they're going to be seven shipments to this street address. Right. You, yeah. you you had the product and it was this in a warehouse? Was this in your garage? Where where are you, where are you <laughs> keeping these? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, you have the you have the goodies room and you walk into the room and and you go pick and pick and pack all the seven different things and put it in a box and ship it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, part of that too. Uh, not only did Top Shelf Gamer come about because we wanted a place to find everything together, but one of the challenges too is um, to reduce cost, right? Because if uh, if I want to buy five different things for a game, I have to pay. I have to go to five different sites and pay five different shipping. So that's another thing that another value that I was that I hope Top Shelf Gamer brings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and certainly, I, I you know, even because obviously, or not necessarily obviously, but I've run a lot of Kickstarters and I've made a lot of games, and I don't do that much. I don't do that many custom things. Um, I guess I do plenty. I guess I do custom things. I don't do that many, like, third-party custom upgrades that are available through my Kickstarter, but, like, certainly when I'm making something, I get all sorts of inquiries about sleeve size, about, hey, what, what about this, or how many of these things are there, and as you're like, why are you asking me all these questions? And then like you sort of like walk back to BGG and you're like, oh, you're posting this in some card sleeves forum, or you're posting this in the like, oh, the maker forum for this. And I think there are a lot of people who actively engage um, with what you, what you two are up to, um, you know, on their own or, or, or with you. So it, it, it certainly seems like a pretty the the we said blinging out your game or upgrading uh, that sort of mixture of upgrading or crafting your 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 sets i think yeah. you know is a pretty dynamic and large group of people who are who are really into it um yeah it okay is. I, it I, 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 games yeah, you know yeah i've had so many customers um say you know these upgrades made me want to play the game again and it, you know the whole game group and that you know that makes us so happy too when we can kind of reinvigorate Help reinvigorate the life of a game, like an old favorite. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think you know, being somebody again who who works with components and design a lot in production, I think what people maybe don't realize is one how um, what's a good word it is flexible our brands are in terms of uh, 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 illusions and narratives and like being able to like uh, like the difference. Uh, we if I have a, a component that looks like a component like my brain, it, like it just becomes it it's it, a cube isn't the same as a, a bundle of wheat right like they're, they're not the same thing um mm-hmm. uh, but also the experience the tactile uh tactile ex- experience of touching and holding things that have heft and weight creates different memories and associations when you play with them so like there really is like more than just from a like if if, if someone's like why would you ever spend an extra 10 bucks in a game that costs you 50 bucks 
Like, why spend 10 more bucks on stuff or 20 more bucks or whatever it is? Uh, it does create a different experience for sure. It creates a heavy box, but it creates a different experience for sure. It's yeah, just an experience in itself. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, that yeah. feels yeah. consequential, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and so early on, so let's, let's put a little timestamp on this. When did you first launch the site? This, uh, the summer of 2015. All right, so coming on summer, so you're about six years in. Yeah. So uh, w w when you started, so you, at first you're like, okay, let's start ta telling people about what we're doing and consolidating this information. I, I suspect you could quickly become, fill as you were finding different people doing stuff like this, you're sort of seeing different forums and sites and places where people are talking about it. Um, would you say it, did it take off pretty quickly? Was it like, no, the first three years we basically didn't have any business? Like, how like how quickly did it take on? What was those early years experience? Because, you know, that's when you're, you're like, we're going to do this thing, but, you know, either it happens or it doesn't. It was an idea, right? You didn't know if it was going to be successful or not. So talk about the early years of the business. Um, well, yeah, the, the first year and a half to two years, it was definitely – really slow we, when we <laughs> I know I remember like that first year if we reached three hundred dollars in a day I'm like awesome <laughs> yeah. but I mean it did it did kind of grow kind of I don't know I don't know if quickly is the best term but um yeah I I need help. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, no, I mean, I, I, it was definitely a, a slow build, right? Yeah, it was a slow build. And, uh, I mean, we're, it's a niche, a niche business in a niche industry, correct? You know, like, so, that, um, but yeah, it's, um, it was a, a, kind of a slow build, and there's been pivots along the way, like any small business or any business period, yeah. right? So, originally, Top Shelf Gamer, uh, we actually even sold games, and then, um, and then that, you know, the distributor at one point, you know, had a change of policy. Okay, I guess we're not selling games. And, you know, and we've had at one point, too, uh, really the vision for Top Shelf Gamer was to be uh, everything. So if there was 10 tokens for a game yeah. or, I don't know, for a piece of weed or something, like we would sell all 10 and let customers choose, right? But that, uh, that was... First of all, it's very capital intensive, and second of all, it's very confusing yeah. for people. We want so, it more streamlined. Yeah. yeah. So we, what we've kind of evolved to has become very curated, and really the best of the best. I mean, that's not only a name, but like by we kind of live to quality. our name. Yeah. Quality. We really believe in quality and yeah. getting the best of the best. So, um, but yeah, no, it's been a slow build, but uh, and there's been pivots along the way, but we're you know we're doing fine now. We're doing well, and. Uh, I don't know if I answered your question, but yeah. No, no, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like it, it, uh, it took some time for it to gain some traction, and it also took some time for you, to, you, you both to discover and not discover, but understand and figure out the, the what works for your business and what doesn't. And you know, um, yeah. no, I mean, I, I thought it was a fine answer. Uh, so <laughs> you know, so at some point, so let's talk. Okay, so you, you have a Kickstarter coming up on October first, and uh, it's for these books compendiums of uh tokens and uh this is the treasure chest uh second edition harvest handbook cataclysmus compendium elemental essentials but these are sort of a little different in that you know uh they're groupings of related components you know whether in this one we've got gold or brick and stone and coal and wood uh, which is very Catan. this is like the Catan resource box give or take um and then they get more and more sort of as you move deeper in, they get more, uh, you know, uh, elaborate. I'm not going to go through every component here, but like my understand. I mean, when did you move from like what was the shift from, hey, we're sourcing all these different components to suddenly saying, no, you know, we should start manufacturing them. Yeah. That's like a huge yeah, so, shift of, in your business. Right. So, well, what happened was when uh, – Jamie Stonemeyer, or I'm sorry, Jamie Stonemeyer. Stonemeyer, mm -hmm. when Stonemeyer Games produced the original boxes, we liked them and they sold well on our site. So we tried buying up as many of the boxes as we could from distributors and we broke them apart and we sold them as 10 packs. And um, we contacted him to see if he 
could manufacture more for us and and uh, sell oh, them. So so sorry. So so basically, you're like people love these components, but yes. they don't want necessarily the exact same combinations or this or that. And sometimes they just want right. the pumpkins. So we're we, you're literally like we can make more money buying them in sets and then splitting them into their individuals and then connecting them to the games like we like to do. So like, let's go buy a hundred of these. Well, and also, yeah. And also it's, it's more than just that. It's more like, um, really where we saw that we could add a lot of values. I love Zolkin, right? You know, it's like, okay, I want a piece, I want this many from this box, this many from this box. And, Oh, this doesn't even exist. Okay. Let's go find out where we can, get those tokens and bring it together and say an offer on top shelf gamer, a beautiful Zolkin set with exactly the types you need for exactly the right. quantity and for right. a proper price. So you don't, yeah. Um, and, and, so, yeah. I, and I absolutely agree that the, as a, as a player, um, I'm more, more times than not going to be thinking about it in the terms of a, of a specific game. Right. More so to some degree than a, a flexible set, though there are also right. people who like collecting and having the flexible set. There's, like, I, there's two appeals in terms of like, no, I want to have stuff so I can play any of my games and pull some things out for it, which is because I, I have got a 700 games and I'm not going to do every one. Um, right. Though at this, but I think in terms of somebody who's like, I'm, I'm going to go find pieces, they probably are starting with a game that they have in right. mind. Okay, but so I want to continue. So, so you're like you're like uh, buying up all of the uh, the, the all, all remaining stock because back then he was still doing Kickstarters, so it must have been you know he probably didn't print more than he, he more than he did. And then you reach out to him and you're like, hey man, and he's very responsive. Hey, uh, we like buy a lot of these. Do you have more? <laughs> and so okay, so continue the story. Yeah, and actually, I'm gonna let you talk about that because I think. Uh, you're the one who ended up calling him, and and how did that go? Like how? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, he said, "Yeah, well, sounds good. Um, you know, why don't you? You know, also on top of that, do you want to be? Let's make some more. And if other people want some tokens too, why don't they talk to you? You know, top shelf gamers. So um, that's kind of how it all started. Um, so we made a big reorder uh and uh that's kind of how it started and then over the course of time uh, over the course of two years uh the tokens were really popular yeah. we and that you know, became more of our business than anything yeah, else. Yeah. So we kind of had to pivot there too because we had we only have so much time and energy so we obviously are going to uh make it go make it towards something that is the most popular. So we, yeah. we were spending a lot of time and energy with the And they're tokens. great. Yeah, I mean, they we were... love our products. We love the top shelf tokens yeah. and, uh, you know, realistic resources. Uh, but, um, and, you know, we really put a lot of effort into creating bundles, said, bundles game, game you know, specific bundles. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, and so after a couple of years, um, it was time to kind of talk, you know, we had a, the contract was coming up again and Jamie had just posted on his blog about kind of focusing on what Stonemaier games does best. And I uh, just thought, you know what, maybe this is kind of just a perfect opportunity to uh, approach Stonemaier games and say, Hey, you know, uh, we've kind of adopted this child of sorts, this product line, sure. uh, you know, can we just, you know, take it for, you know, buy it from you. Right. And, uh, yeah, and uh, Jamie and Stonemaier Games were great with that, and so now they are top-shelf tokens, and we completely own the product line, and we're looking to expand them with this Kickstarter. And, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, but that got us into the manufacturing process, because yes. yeah. now that we own them, we are actually working with Panda and to, to get these actually created and made. Yeah. So. yeah. And with, I, well, go also, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, before that, we were actually very uh, involved with the manufacturing, too. Before we actually officially owned it, we were uh, basically communicating to Stonemaier Games exactly how many we, need, we needed, you know, for kind of doing the forecasting, saying, hey, we let's make some tokens together. So we helped, before we even owned the product line, we introduced new tokens. We helped design and tweak the designs on Wheat Chiefs and some other products. Yeah. So... Yeah, we 
like I said, it really feels like kind of our adopted baby, and uh, I feel like we've taken good care of it, and uh, yeah, just that's where we're at. I mean, it, it's a super, it's a super cool story in all sorts of ways. I mean, again, I, you know, I've known Jamie for a long time, but that on one hand, that idea of focusing on the heart of you know what the core aspects of your business as your business grows, he he had pursued a variety of you know little other things that weren't core to his business right and each one becomes its own learning experience and you know jamie's pretty good at um sort of being willing to be like he you know oh there's this company interested in this thing i've been working with them for a while it's not really core to my business so why not let them do like that seems like a very uh jamie is uh, i don't want to use the word mature but like uh, you know a thoughtful enough business owner that he's willing to be like i'm not gonna just because i did it first doesn't mean i need to continue doing it type of thing um Mm -hmm. and so so you you're getting familiar with the the production process right which is it's a whole different thing luckily panda's sort of the best of the best when it comes to really high quality um components but also that sort of client and and you know working with their partners and making sure everyone's very under uh, aware of impact and stuff um, yep. And so you now have this opportunity, right? So you, when you, I, I assume since you're focusing on, you know, the most, the not, most popular might not be the best way of saying it, but the, the, the token types and token resources that uh, do the best and offer the most, maybe they, the most flexibility or the, they offer the, the, the work of the most popular games, the games that are most requested maybe is a better way of saying it. Um, and... And you're taking this on. So is this your first? So, so then you're you're like, okay, we have the brand. We're we're, we're, we're you know we're we're gonna rename it Top Shelf Gamer and associate our brand with it. Now we're gonna, because you're already manufacturing, you're already printing and using them. So, where was the shift? And I think it's the last thing to get to where you were like, and now we should do a Kickstarter, right? Because this is even another thing that mm-hmm. it, like you could you could have just kept printing and manufacturing, but you were like, we want to do more or different. So how did it come up? Now, how did you go to Let's Do a Kickstarter? Yeah. Um, well, the biggest thing is funding. We are a small company still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, to make a vast amount of tokens, it does take a lot of upfront capital. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, we just thought that it would be best if we did a Kickstarter because then we can bring out more tokens at one time than just do maybe one or two a year. So we're, we're, we're just trying this out, seeing if this is something sure. that's going to work. Plus, on top of that, there we just had a lot of people requesting, when are you going to come out with, or when are you going to remake the treasure chest? When are you going to remake um, all these mm-hmm. other boxes? So, we, you know, we brainstormed. We said, okay, well, why don't we kind of do both? We, we make, uh, re- remake some of the popular ones that we've had requests requests for and then bring out new token boxes as well um when you do do a kickstarter it does have to be more in this um box form because um various reasons it needs to be kind of in a what we sell on our our site bundles for games that's just too broad to be able to do a kickstarter you have to be more focused yeah so Yeah, but then after the Kickstarter, we'll have those tokens and we can just reorder them to create more token bundles on our site later. Right. Um, but it, it's really the molds sort of, and all those different things. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, like she said, you know, Kickstarter started way back in the day, right, where you literally needed help to create a project. And, um, you know, that's, like, as, as Marlena that. mentioned, that's part of it. And then, you know, uh, also, we're it's kind of like launching. A, we want to bring the tokens and the boxes back into the public eye. Also, it's been six or seven years yeah. uh, since uh, Stonemaier Games produced the original boxes, and I there's always new gamers, and we'd love to <clears throat> use the platform to say, "Hey, look at these beautiful tokens and these beautiful boxes you might not have been aware of," uh, and also. The, the box themselves probably would not be created without a Kickstarter. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of to gauge the... Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 as we were talking about earlier, it's, it's an interesting product set because 
it it has it, it it's these boxes with a lot of utility, but they're also sort of a, a collection thing. And and I know that because I I back those original campaigns too. And and that you know, um, it they, they have they, sometimes it's cool to just have little mini objects too, right? And 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 so it it, it fits an interesting space where it lets you bring bring it to a variety of games, right? Like because I as I, as I was mentioned, I haven't gone through and and. You know, I have I have a lot of games, and so I got, and I, I I fortunately or unfortunately don't sit and play the same. I have to I have to play a lot of new games all the time, so I sort of yeah. work through it. Yeah. Um, but having those around is a fun way to be like, oh hey, this game has X, this game has coins, or this game has this. Let's go grab those and drop them in. Um, though at the same time, I I still think for a lot of folks, it's more a little bit more like, hey, um, I want to you know play game Y, and I'm going to go find all the components for game Y. On the Kickstarter, yeah. um, will you, I mean, I, th- I, f- I feel like I recall that, like, there's sort of like an easy, re- we have a reference to the different games that basically use these components and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. We'll have that. Uh, we, uh, yeah. There's like 80 games that, something like that, like 60 games that are served well by just the boxes here. Now, there might, and we, we'll have a, a spreadsheet available and we're going to, Hopefully, ask the uh, you know gaming community to help flesh it out also. But um, yeah, it, it's amazing when we put together this list how much just those four boxes really serve as far as games. Because um, as you mentioned, there's really two ways you can go about it. You can say, I really love this game. I want a token set for that game. It's always going to be in the box no matter where I go. But um, it's great to have a, a gener- generalized collection up on your game shelf and say, oh... Uh, I don't play this game very often, but this would be a great thing to use some tokens for, some realistic resources. Let's go pull those out. So it, there's both sides, the general collection and a game-specific. Right, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, from, it, it, you know, it's a real win-win, as you said, because it's it's this niche and this niche. But, um, you know, by, by being able to manufacture these, you have – Obviously, you know every backers, and you do whatever you do on the Kickstarter to, to do that. But you you're, you cover it, you know, you cover the cost to create the molds and, and bring these out, and then they become available and they add to the set and expand the number of games that are can can be you know customized, right? If using yeah. the the site, right? And so I think you know to me, even though I you know I I see this as a you know everyone has their own opinion on Kickstarter and 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 where it is and what it's become but from my perspective right it this still speaks to that opportunity of hey we want to do this thing we couldn't really do it otherwise but mm-hmm. well, help us do it and you know be a part of making it a product and I think I think that's fantastic um <laughs> you know we uh we've been toying with the idea of miniatures um for for Skull Call which is one of our games and I, I know we're not talking about miniatures but Part of that part of that process has been like, like it's a really specific thing, um, and I so I did I did one and I I you know this is like I I got the Eric to do the three um, D model and then I just printed it on three D printer, um, yeah. uh, but there's this conversation around like man I think this is cool, but how many people think this is cool and it's pretty specific to a specific game. Yeah. And, and 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 it's not small, so it costs a lot. So you know, getting you know, finding that mix of cool product, but not so specific that it's only one person who wants it. But like, how do you how do you triangulate all that stuff? And I and I think it it's a challenge. And I think you know, uh, these uh, the different um, books and components and tokens do a nice job of that. Um, so yeah, I, I, again, I, I was a fan of the original, and, and these look great too. Uh, I was looking at some of the updates and adjustments. This is the the harvest one with all the food in it. It's always fun. These, for those who are curious, these are the pumpkins I was referring to. Um, well, and so so you so October first. This is the Kickstarter. Um, you, you know, you've been doing this for six years. It looks like you're continuing to 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 do your run your business and grow it. Um, would you say? And it sounds like you've you've settled in on the business. Like it sounds like, it you know it's not like you're you're. Su- are you still one day thinking you're gonna like be selling games along with it, or or have you really centered in on this? And this is th- these are the areas you specialize in, and 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 it works, and that's what you're growing. Yeah, we're specializing in just the upgrade components 
it it just got to be too much. It, in a sense, it was a blessing in disguise when we uh, half the games we could sell, we couldn't anymore. Yeah. So uh, scaling back was actually was actually really great. So yeah, yeah, it really let us focus on what we do best and not be all over the place. Uh, so yeah, mm-hmm. it wasn't a great awesome. pivot. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think I think that that you know that's part of figuring out your business, and also I think people forget. Uh, we were talking a little bit about having a bunch of um, juggling a bunch of plates or whatever the expression is, balancing a bunch of plates, juggling a bunch of balls. Um, you know, running a business just has a, a time, and a cost, and an, and an opportunity cost on you as an individual, right? When we're talking about a small business, so sometimes, you know. Something can have margins. You're like, well, we made that extra money, but was it worth, you know, the extra 500 hours to to get that money? We could have gone to, you know, yeah, it paid for dinner, but we could have had like a a hobby and we could have played some games (laughs) instead. (laughs) Um, Right. And and so time is valuable when you run out of it. Um, And, you know, I mean, I think really where uh, the companies that sell the games themselves, you know, they're... Uh, really trying to go with mass, you know, quantity. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's not really quite what we do. We'll sell games here and there for like very uh, one offs, you know, yeah. it's not like we never sold games, but yeah. yeah. Um, we have Pendulum right now on our, on our site. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes, yeah. I mean, I, I, do, I, yeah. I, I that, you, that, that's not to say you can't sell games. I'm just, in the, way, in, the, in the way you've adjust, moved along with the business. But, you know, so. Um, I mean, it's it's an it's an awesome story. Thanks so much um, for for taking us through it. I think, um, you know, find a need, fill a need, or another whatever that expression is, right? But like, I I I love the versions of people who have built business from like, I wanted this thing, and this was really frustrating for me. So like, I just we worked and we solved it, and it didn't solve quickly, and it took some time, and we had to roll with it. But um, yeah. you, you, it sounds like you've you've landed on a good place. Uh, the the website. Topshelfgamer.com. dot com. Mm-hmm. Um, you go in and you can look at components specifically, or you can say, "Here's some games." You click it; it'll bring it up. And we didn't really talk about sleeves and and inserts as much as components. But if I recall, it also includes like, "Hey, here's the you need twenty two of these sleeves, forty of these sleeves, t- ten of these right. sleeves," and, and which in and of itself is a lot of research, like just right. knowing what sleeves you need for for a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We try to take all the work you know, off the gamer, off the customer, because mm-hmm. again, it's, it was created for our passion and our hobby, right? Like right. what would we want? And even with metal coins, we sell metal coins and, uh, Oh, we need, we do the same thing. You need this quantity and of these types these, for this. And these distributions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. no, it's super cool. Awesome. Well, th- thanks so much for, for, for being on. It's been great. Thanks for having us. This is great. Yeah, thank <laughs> you so much. Awesome. And thanks everyone for watching. Hi. Hey everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.